ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! Yeah, that must be me! Hi, everybody. Welcome. Yes, no studio audience again tonight, because once again, we have for you, by your demand, by your request, another Wally George Hot Seat Special. On this uh, kind of a special weekend, uh, well, I guess you could call it Valentine Weekend, and of course... Uh, we have all kinds of things we're going to be talking about later that we are personally celebrating, Janice and I. So stay with me now for this next hour and call all your friends. Wake them up, if you must, and tell them, tune on KDOC TV 56, because it's time for this great hot seat special. And uh, before I, I go any farther and introduce my co-host and my beautiful wife, let me... Uh, tell you what you're going to see on the show tonight. For example, you'll be meeting such idiots as Timothy Leary. Ah! You know, uh, the, the American Nazi Party. Uh, some punk peaks peace activists. You're going to meet Vanessa, the undresser, if you know what that is. She's a stripper and, and God knows what else. Uh, we have a draft resistor. A man who, a man, <laughs> a punk who says he would never fight for his country under any conditions, Renee Adams, then we're going to take you back about four years, maybe five years, when that rodent Rick Dees paid his first visit to the hot seat, and what a dark day that was for me. You'll see Dees. And then you will be sharing a few personal moments, which we'll tell you about later. But first, before we get any farther, let's introduce, uh, first of all, my, my, uh, my co-host and uh, my security chief, the Dynamic Protection. Over a year now, he's been sitting in the chair. My good friend, uh, Bill Bancroft. Hi, Bill. Hi, Wally. How are you doing? Hey, we, we have a big night planned. We got a big night, and right off the bat, I want to wish you and Janice happy anniversary. This is big number two. Hey! Hey, two years. Two years. Janice, can I can I ask you, does it seem like two years with Wally? It seems like longer. <laughs> it, seems like, it seems like 12 years. 12 years to me. People ask me, and I'll ask you, and you can tell our millions of viewers across America, what's it like being married to Wally George? Well, I better say it's wonderful. He's so charming and handsome, and, and it's and just terrific. fantastic. A handsome hunk. That's it, okay. Is that okay? That's <laughs> terrific. Okay, enough of this mishmash. Uh, let's get going, shall we? All right. Everybody ready? Let's do it. Okay. Let's start off by meeting some of the most ludicrous idiots that have ever crossed this stage. And we'll see a whole bunch of them kind of lumped together here in this first segment. You'll meet people like Timothy Leary and uh, Nazi Party um, and so forth. So watch. You'll get sick to your stomach like I do every time I see this clip. Go ahead. Can I tell you, right off the bat, can I tell you, I am sick and tired of you pukey little peace activists. What about you? You have always been a pain in my neck. You really have. Why are you still hanging around, you radical peace out What are you trying to do? I'm here to tell people that a nuclear war is not survivable. A nuclear war is not winnable. I disagree with President Reagan. I disagree with you. And we need peace on Earth now, or we're going to blow ourselves to smithereens. Oh, oh. And, I'm here, and I'm here to tell you, punk, that the only way we're going to have peace is with Ronald Reagan and peace through strength. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to answer it. How does it make you feel that millions of young people have died or an OD'd and gone bananas because you advocated the use of drugs? Now, what you're putting out is a total 1,000% lie. Is that right? Yes, it is. Well, let me give you a little example. Let me give you a little example. There's not one piece of scientific information. And Wally, you calm down, Wally. You're not calm down. You're not going to... Timothy, this is America, Wally. You this is America. Don't point that at you, me. Now. I'll do whatever I want on my show. Don't order me around. Uh, I mean, you point are, that 
at me, Wally. Come on, point. You are a disgrace to mankind, Timothy. Oh, yeah. Well, then you must ag agree with him when Metzger came on my show and said that there was no Holocaust. You're damn right I do. You're damn right I do. You believe That's there was no Holocaust right. in Nazi Germany? The Holocaust is a Jewish lie generated... <laughs> it for 40 years to bilk American taxpayers out of their hard-earned money so they could attack Arabs and murder them. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. What I'm trying to say, Karen, is this. Why do you have to get into a, a drug where your eyes get all red, your, where, your brain, where your brain gets cloudy? Why can't you just be high on life? Answer me that. I do get high off life, but sometimes yeah. smoking a bong load or something, it helps relax a person. No. Wally, do you think Wait, this is the perfect how? government, Wally? I do certainly you? do think yeah. right. Wally, how can this be the perfect government when there's people starving, there's people living in the streets? How well, that, sure, so people like that? you are starving because you haven't got the guts to go out and get a job. Oh. By the way, do you have a job? Oh, yeah. I, w I work for myself mowing lawns. I don't have... Oh! Hey, I don't pay taxes to any government. Well, I think... Oh. Yeah, good grass. You, you are actually calling... You're actually calling for... I wouldn't for... pay taxes to this government, Wally. Why should I support a bunch of politicians? Why should I support politicians? Well, Let them get a hey, real I can job. See that you don't Let the politicians a get a real job, Wally. Wait a minute. You're, all, you're all, all, only cut grass. You smoke it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here is a little punk who believes in Darwin's theory of evolution that we all came from monkeys. I want to tell you one thing. He is the best argument in favor of evolution yeah. I've ever seen. Do you really mean to tell me? I, I mean, can you really, really sit there and tell me that you believe in the theory of evolution that, that we all came from monkeys? We, as evolutionists, do not believe that we came from apes. We believe that we evolved from a lower form of man. That and was you are the lowest form of man I've ever seen. That was, how, how can you say? How can you say satanic music that encourages? Devil worship is fun. That's oh. dangerous. Oh, I don't think it encourages devil worship. I think it's sort of like you. By Why showing... Oh. 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 Wait a minute, pal. Wait a minute, pal. One thing I have never stood for, and I will not put up with you for 10 seconds if you will say that I have ever encouraged devil worship. I stand for God and country. Yeah. There's, 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 Here's one of the here's one of the albums you that, that. that you're gonna hear on KMET. What do you think of that? Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Right, but, but Wally, Wally. Iron, what do you think about Iron Maiden? Look at that. <laughs> Wally. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's just unbelievable uh, what some of this satanic stuff does, and I still believe it to this day. That was Mike Harrison, you saw, who used to be on KMET, lost his job, and I thank the Lord every night that he did, but, uh, and there is no more KMET. I wish there was no more satanic rock music, because I do believe to this, I'm not against all rock. I've said this a million times. I get letters saying, oh, you don't like rock music. I'm not against all rock music. I'm against satanic music that, that, uh, that actually promotes Worship of Satan promotes the taking of drugs. And Janice, I, I'm sure you agree with that, don't you? Oh, it's very dangerous, yeah. There's been a lot of reports of how dangerous satanic music really is. It can lead kids into all sorts of things. So I say, hey, rock music, that's fine with me. But get rid of the satanic drug-oriented crap and do it fast. We'll be back in a moment with the unbelievable Vanessa the Undressa. Stay there.
We're back. Wally George here with our hot seat special tonight. We w do not have an audience on tonight's show, but stay tuned because we're playing some ludicrous moments from the past seven years of my hot seat <coughs> show. I'm just choking with the emotion whenever <laughs> I mention it, you know. I get all choked up, folks. <laughs> anyway, uh, Call your friends, and, and everybody stay with us until 12 midnight. And remember, next week we'll be back with our live audience and some more ludicrous guests. But in a moment, we'll get to our next clip. First, may I remind you that you people in the Southern California area, may I remind you that every day, Monday through Friday, we do hot seat highlights. Uh, 4 to 4.30, I do a commentary every day on the issues of the day, and then we show you, like we're doing tonight, some of the most outrageous moments from the past seven years of Hot Seat. So join me every day, Monday through Friday, 4 o'clock for Hot Seat Heights, and then, of course, every Saturday night, uh, Hot Seat with a brand new show for you. Usually we have our live studio audience, except when we have specials. And so uh, make it a date, six days a week. KDOC TV 56, Hot Seat Heights, and of course, Hot Seat. Now, we're going to be getting ready for our eighth year on television. Isn't that amazing, That's Bill? great. It's really good. And they said it wouldn't last. We're going into our eighth year this July. You'll take part in the celebration. All right. I can't wait. My uh, co-hosts uh, this evening are Bill Bancroft and my beautiful wife and producer, Janice George. And Bill... I don't think you were here when Vanessa was on our show. No, uh, I, I never had the pleasure. Uh, it, it's, it's no pleasure. <laughs> it's no pleasure. You're, okay. you're lucky to have missed this. Okay. Uh, I like to call her Vanessa the Andressa. Uh, she's a stripper and... Uh, exactly. What and who did she do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a good Freudian slip. Uh, yeah. Well... <laughs> Watch the monitor and you'll see uh, who and what uh, she does. Here right. she is. Okay. <laughs> now, Vanessa, Vanessa, hold it, hold it. I'm over here. Hi. Boy, oh boy. Now, now the reason we have Vanessa back, and believe me, I had no plans to, is Vanessa is in another business even lower than the last business we had her in. Now, now for those of you who perchance missed her sordid performance on this program. Hoshi, let's show them what happened the last time she was on. Oh, I'll tell you something. I think we've had a just about enough of this. You may be performing for a lot of guys, but I have news for you. I will never be someone to see your act. I will never see that act of yours ever. Never. I will never. Never see that kind of thing ever. So, so, so. Wally, let me tell you something. You be seeing it sooner than you think, what do you probably. Mean? What do I mean, Molly? Now, wait a minute. Isn't that the grading? No! And here she is, Wally. Now, Vanessa, when you were on the show last time, you came on here as a singing stripper. And I thought you had hit the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> scraped the bottom of the barrel then. Are you still a singing stripper? Yes, but I have a new business now also I know that I'm about doing. your new business. And look, oh, she... It I'll, keeps getting go, better and better, Wally. Uh, no, it gets worse and worse, No, Vanessa. it's better. Take a look at this. This is her new business, Vanessex. <laughs> Experience a female strip show by telephone, the next best thing to being there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, Vanessa... You said on the last show that you were on, and, and you told this degrading business that you're in, where you go into banks and the offices and strip naked 
in, in front of total strangers, which I think is the most degrading thing that I can think of. And I thought that was the worst I heard of. Now you're hitting an all-time new low. You are going into a business that I understand now is sweeping this nation because sick people like you are doing it to, to, our, to our country. You are letting weirdo men call you and for a dollar a minute you'll talk dirty to them on the telephone and say anything they want. What do you think about that kind of sickness? <laughs> Why would you get into this kind of a sickening business? Once again, Wally, you're uh, uh, taking there's everything. There's a microphone right there. You're taking everything the wrong way, and everything that I say have said in the past, you have always added to it to make it seem worse than it really is. Well, what is worse than what? Wait a minute. Now, let's no, go right, let's this is not to be confused with phone sex, Wally. Well, then what is it, Vanessa? This you, is stripping you talk dirty over, on the phone. I told you or someone, I can't remember who it was, I got kicked out of a hospital. I went to visit a man that was sick. I stripped topless to a G-string. Oh, how wonderful for the poor sick guy. I was dressed guy. up as a nurse. She's, the man, all, she's all hard, isn't she? He so, thoroughly enjoyed the show, but I got kicked out of the hospital. No wonder. I would have kicked you out, too. Okay, so I thought, of, thought it over, and I thought for the people that are too sick to go to the bachelor parties that I dance at, or they're too sick, or they're in a wheelchair. A lot of people are handicapped and they can't get around, but they'd like to see my show. This is what I do. This is why I started the business. And what I do is I strip over the telephone, oh, how and they wonderful. get to pick. They get to pick the lingerie out. I come. Do you want a sample? No, I don't want a sample. Listen. Yeah. Watch it. I don't. I don't want. It. Never, never mind. Listen. Listen, don't do that, or you're going to be off in about 10 seconds. I have news for you. Wally, no. I'm not even doing anything. No, and you like it, and you know I, it. Uh, <laughs> you are... Wally. You are wait, 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 wait. You are so wrong. Oh, you, Wally, you have no, come off it. Listen, the people who call you on the telephone to have you talk dirty to them need a you're little... You're turned on by need, me. That's why you have oh. me on the show as well. Just, just Wally, let me, I don't know. I am talking. Zipper your mouth until I'm through talking, or Wally, you're off you the stage. you let me talk. I'll let you know when I'm through talking to you. I now, can't believe it. If you. you think you would turn me on, you are a sick girl. <laughs> I mean, that punk rocker turns me on more than Wally, you do. Wally, do you think... <laughs> now, don't... Don't try do you to, think we listen, can have a civilized conversation, Wally? Listen, Remember what happened to, last on, time? Don't try to... Don't, do you think we can be civilized? You spew off your mouth, Wally. Listen, you, Half the time, you don't even know what you're talking about. Don't talk about. about being civilized. You don't even know what the word is from the, from the business Wally, that you're I'm in. Wally, I'm civilized. That's why I make the money that I make, and I'm getting as popular as I'm getting, because I am civilized to people, and I know how to treat people, which you sure. could take a few well, lessons right, from right, me, no, no, and you could learn how to treat people. Listen. What's What's wrong Wait, with making I, people feel good, Wally? You hurt people's feelings all the time. No. At least I make people feel good. I do this Listen, to wait make a minute, people wait a happy. You make people. You run people into the ground. Will you shut your no mouth? I'm talking to you. All, shut your mouth. You do. It's the shut, truth, and shut, you know you, it. And that's why you want me to shut up. You are a sick woman. You know that? Now oh. just, just zipper your mouth. I'll tell you what, what you are. Oh my God. It's okay. You know, you really need help. You need mental help. You really do. I now, need help. You are in, you charge how much money for this telephone strip? How much do you charge? I charge $15 for 15 minutes, and for every minute that you go over, it's a dollar more. Well, you know what? You should go into business with my last guest. You two deserve each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, for $20, I mean, you could have a phone call strip and they could look into your background and dig up some dirt no, on they're it. looking into me. Now, why don't you? Why don't it's you? It's just like I am now. Normally, I, I, I don't I, wear any I'm underwear. I'm not wearing any underwear. I don't care what you wear. Now, you tell me, does that turn you on? I know it turns you on, Wally. You, you know would what? love it. I don't have anything on under you this know, gown, Wally. You know, this is really, this is embarrassing. You know, you are, you are, no, 
You aren't even sexy. You won't even listen to we're, what we're, I do. You, I get on the phone. Let me just explain wait a minute, to these wait a people minute. so we're, they know we're what taking I a, do. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. We're, we're going to take a break and come back. But let me tell you something before we take the break. You are not sexy. You are sickening. I'll be right back. She is. She is absolutely sickening. And, and Janice, isn't it hysterical how she was trying to convince us all that she was performing some public service for mankind? Boy, she's all hot, you know. She said, I'd do it just to make people feel good, and she charges them a fortune. Yeah, what? Yeah, if, if she's such a, a good Samaritan, why doesn't she do this for nothing, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, that was Vanessa almost six years ago. I wonder where she is now. <laughs> I, I even hate to think. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> We're back. Wally George here with our Hot Seat Highlights special tonight. Uh, we return with our live studio audience next Saturday. We're going to get to our, our next uh, idiot. We're going to present to you a draft resistor who uh, tells me on this clip that he would never, ever serve his country under any conditions. Uh, before we do that, let me remind you to join me this coming Monday. Every Monday night, we do the Wally George Great American Radio Show. It's our fourth year on KLAC, the home of country classics, the Lakers, the Kings, and the Wally George Great American Radio Show. Every Monday night from 7 until 10, join me, KLAC 570 on the AM dial. You can call me on the phone, talk back to Wally and my ludicrous guests on the air. Call me on the phone for three hours. Join me this Monday night. We're back to our regular time slot, 7 to 10 p.m. This Monday night, KLAC 570 on the AM dial. Join me and call me on the phone. Now, you know, Bill, I think there's probably nothing lower. Nobody could be lower than a man who says he will never serve his country, will resist the draft, will resist uh, going into war. Don't you think that's the, the scummiest of the... Oh, I agree scum. with you. The guy's a freeloader. I mean, a lot of us have participated in the defense of this country. and We haven't loved every moment that we did it. But there's a price for everything. There's a price for free, for freedom. And that's one of the things that he had to pay. And you're right. The guy's scum. Well, here he is, Mr. Scum himself. He, his name is Rene Adams. This goes back about uh, four and a half years when we greeted this uh, draft resistor. Go ahead. You are a draft resistor. Um, yes. And you call yourself the American draft resistor. You are yes. no American. No. 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 Why? Why? Why are you? A, why are you a draft resistor? Why? Okay. Just, just tell me that. First of all, it's against my morals to kill anybody that I don't even know. Wait a Second minute. Second of all, I'm against killing because Jesus Christ teaches no. that those who live by the sword die by the sword. Secondly, it's not a commandment that says there should be a draft. It's a commandment that said thou shalt not kill. Is that why you're a draft resistor? No, I got, a, I got a lot of reasons. There are many good Christians who have fought and died for this country, and you're not one of them. What I'm saying is it's needless to fight and die for this country. Wait a minute. It is needless. All right, listen. Any country... If we... Wait. If we... Just a minute. If we had not... If we had not fought and died when when the the Japanese came over and bombed Pearl Harbor in World okay. Wait a minute, let me finish. Our, if, if we had not fought and died, the Japanese and Adolf Hitler, you would not be sitting here today. You'd be sitting in some concentration camp, my friend. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You mean to tell me that all the people who fought and died in World War II, it wasn't worthwhile? Okay, it's never worthwhile to kill someone under the under the guise of nationalism. So nationalism rather, is never an, an excuse to kill somebody. So you'd okay. rather wait a minute now. If the Jesus Christ never, came on the just, earth. Never mind. Quoting, oh, never mind Jesus never, Christ. We're not quoting religion okay, here t tonight. We're not quoting religion. We are talking. And listen, yeah. there are many people that I know who wear crosses around the neck who believe in Jesus Christ who would gladly lay down their okay, life. Okay, those people are living country. contradictions. Yeah. Those people are living contradictions. They're living, they're supposedly, they're living contradictions. They're supposedly living 
in, in order that, that people could live together, they, they're supposed to live by what Jesus Christ teaches, yet they go and they kill people for no reason. They go and provoke nations. That, that, they go invade sovereign nations. Wait, uh, they provoke on, nations. On. You are talking, you keep, hold on. You keep throwing up the name Jesus Christ. Yes. You know that the Soviet Union is anti-Jesus Christ, anti-God. Would you as a Christian like to see the Soviet Union take over this entire world? Okay, first of all, if we keep... Oh, answer we my keep question. Okay, listen. Answer the question. Wait a minute. I'm asking you, just answer me yes or no. Okay. Would you like to th see the anti-Christ, anti-God, Soviet Union take over this country and the rest of the free world? Would it, you fight to see that not happen? No, I wouldn't fight to see oh. that. Oh. There's such thing as a volunteer army. If you guys want to die for whatever cause you have, enlist, okay? How many of you here have you enlisted? How many of you enlisted? Okay, you've enlisted? Are you all enlisted? Okay, okay. Where's your law? All right, go enlist. Go fight any battle you want to fight, okay? Okay, if you're not a big enough individual to stand up. Renee, you're talking up, yes, to me, not my audience. Okay, I'm sorry. Now listen. If they're not big enough individuals and yourself are not a big enough individual. If you, if you are very willing to let these young men out there fight and die for your freedom in this country, then you should not be in this country. No. 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 Yes, yes, yes. That's absolutely true. If a man is not willing to fight and die for this country, then they have no place in this country. Absolutely. Okay, we're going we're gonna to take a little break and then come back. And believe it or not, you're going to witness the first visit, the first visit of the raunchy rodent, uh, the king of raunchiness, Rick the Sleaze Dees. Now, he's been on this show several times. You're going to see his first infamous appearance on Hot Seat. Don't go away. We're back, Wally George here with our special Hot Seat Edition on this Saturday night. Every Saturday night, 11 to 12 midnight, be here. Now, uh, before we, we go on and, and meet the Schlees, Dees, uh, Rick Dees will be here in a minute. His first visit, unbelievable. I want to remind you that we do love to hear from you. Let's put the address up on the screen. Write to me, I'm always happy to hear from you. And if you have the nerve, if you've got the guts to come down and debate me on the hot seat, let me know. Whether you're male, female, or even an it, we'll be very happy to have you down. If you have a, a good cause and you want to debate me on some particular issue, write to me at this address on your screen and let me know what you want to debate me about. And uh, be sure to include your telephone number. You must be 18 years of age or older to appear as a guest and debate me on the hot seat. Okay, Wally George, P.O. Box 787, Hollywood, California, 90078. We'll also be happy to send you a free autographed picture, personally autographed to you. So write to me. And I, I might even read your letter in the mailbag segment on the Hot Seat Show. It's Wally George, Box 787, Hollywood, California, 90078. Janice and I go through all the mail every day, and we answer it all personally, so let me hear from you, okay? Now remember, if you want to come down, pardon me, Mike, if, if you want to come down, it's an old gang. <laughs> so old. If you want to... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come down and be a, a member of my studio audience, uh, call the numbers on your screen any day, Monday through Friday during business hours, between 8.30 in the morning and 5.30 at night, and uh, leave your name and your telephone number and tell the operator how many tickets you want. The tickets, of course, are free. We tape my Hot Seat show every Wednesday evening at approximately 6 p.m. We play it back the following Saturday night between 11 and 12 midnight so you can come down and, and then you can see yourself on the air. So call these numbers during business hours any day, Monday through Friday, and reserve your free hot seat tickets. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person one of these days at one of our future tapings in the 213 area code. It's 464611. 464611. And in the 714 area code, it's 999. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Okay? Don't call now. Call during business hours during the week. Now, Janice, you were our producer, and you were, were present on stage when Raunchy Rick Dees paid his last visit the to last us, correct? Time, right. 
Yeah, I was here and uh, raunchy Rick was just as raunchy as ever. I uh, I pushed a pie in his face. Oh, we I threw was so, eggs. It was so pleased hilarious. that you did that. Yeah, we smashed chairs, threw eggs. Um, it was just pandemonium on this set. Well, as, as you people know, if you've been, been watching me for the past seven years, uh, Raunchy Rick Dees and I have been, carry, have been carrying on a feud, uh, and, and rightfully so, because he's been really horrifying on the air, saying terrible things about me, even picking on Janice and saying lewd, crude things about our marriage and so forth. So uh, we've been at it and going at it for a long time, back and forth, uh, with probably uh, the worst feud I've ever had in my whole life. Now, uh, uh, about uh, five and a half years ago, maybe almost six years ago, Rick Dees came down to challenge me for the first time on the hot seat. It was revolting. Watch, here's what happened. Welcome back, and in case you just joined us and you see this uh, strange-looking person on the, your screen, uh, my guest is Raunchy Rick. Here he is. Wait a minute. Let me, wait a minute. Let me just ask one thing. Why do you insist on jumping on my case all the time? Uh, wait, hey, what, what do you mean? I, I'm doing a radio show that goes all over the world. <laughs> You think you're hold on, you think you're so smart. Do you know that our show very soon is gonna be in Canada, Australia, and England? We are so sorry for you. Canada, Australia, and England. That's right. And, and, and all over the country. But I'll tell you this, Dees, the reason I'm on your case is you you're probably a semi-intelligent person. But but the thing what is this? The thing is I listen to your show, and I'm trying to do what's good for America, and I think some of the things you do on your program are raunchy. Why must you get into this dirty double entendre and zippers and all that? That's what people need. They want that type people of stuff. People need that. They don't need that. Oh. You know what I want you to do? What I want you to do, I can make you into... I can make you into a different person. I can change you into a new man. This is the guy that has mud wrestlers on his show. Oh, come on. Mud wrestlers. I'm exposing them on my you show. You expose them, all right. That's right. <laughs> mud wrestlers. Jeez. I want to give you a whole new image. I want you to get rid of that stupid clothes. I want you to start dressing like me in red, white, and blue ties. I want you to start playing patriotic music. And I want you to start oh. talking about America and how great Ronald Reagan is, right? And, it's, and instead of playing those records you play, I want to hear John Philip Sousa and John Wayne. Right? You have probably exposed yourself as being the biggest geek of all time. Oh! Get him out of here! Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Can you imagine that? He calls someone who speaks out for patriotism a geek. Wait a minute. See? You're sick, Rick, isn't he? No. People, I'll talk to these people. We'll see. We'll explain. Oh, Wait a minute. I have the goods on you. I oh. knew. Out of there. What do you have in there? I'm going to expose you for what you really are. Oh, oh I know. No, I... no, you come on with all this patriotism oh, right. stuff. I'm going to expose you for what you really are. Uh, what I'm saying this, Dick. What I'm saying to this, Rick, is I'm trying to save you. Excuse me, just a sec. Let me wind this poor guy up again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Now between you two guys. Now wait a minute. Why don't you Let do for radio what Wally does for television? Let me tell you something. Hey Rick, you I'm take inspired. away. You, you listen to his show now. You you take away his lovely wife Julie Dees. Yeah. You take. Oh. 
Hey, don't bring my wife into this you, now. No, 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 I'm trying to tell you. You take away from his show, you take away Julie Dees, his wife, yeah. you take away Charlie Wright, the coach, <laughs> and you take away his dirty jokes, and you take away his sound effects and his dirty records, and then what do you... And then what... And then what do you have? And take all that away, and what do you have left? Wally George! You have... Hey, what you have... Le- what you have left is a poor man's Pee Wee Herman. Wait a minute. I don't have to take that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just Pee Wee. You know, he looks a lot like Pee Wee Herman. He does. Okay, hold All on. All right, now you got people in the audience saying that I was fired and stuff like that. All right, Rick, here's what I want you to do. Just do one thing for me. Would you do one thing for me, and you're going to feel a hell of a lot better. Will you, will you do it for me? I will be good. Just hold on. Just repeat after me, and I know, trust me, Rick, you're going to feel great. Repeat after me. Say, hallelujah. Go ahead. <laughs> hallelujah. Hold, hold on. Hey, this is very important for Rick. Hallelujah. This could change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've seen the light. I've seen the light. I am now. I am now. A true Wallyite. <laughs> yeah! Wait a minute! The world's first living brain donor, right here. <laughs> How can, uh, I, what is the deal? Well, why don't we go to the audience and get some questions from the audience? Yeah. Uh, yes, come on. Yeah. Right, look at this. He put on dark glasses. Yeah. Well, yes. Well, I, I have to put these on because of your bright suit there. Uh, <laughs> this is stupid. I knew it was going to be stupid, so, but this so, is a um, stupid show. <laughs> Do you know he has so much hairspray on, there was some wind outside the studio and both of his sideburns cracked? <laughs> no, no, wait. Get him down. Get him down. Would you get him down? Okay, get down, Wally. Yeah, yeah, what's your question? Oh, my question, Mr. Sleaze. I mean, Mr. Dees. <laughs> I, I've had this big problem. I can't figure out what it is you do. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. All right. All right. Wait a minute. So, you know I've got a big name yet. So I've got a big name. Neither is he. So, okay, I'm so not a big name What is yet. it? What do you do? Uh, yes. Even I can't figure out what, what it is that you do. What, what do you do? I'm an entertainer. Oh. I've been listening to your show, and you're about as entertaining as a test pattern. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. These hey. two guys. Let me explain these guys. These guys came with me. Right. We thought there's so much snow on this channel. That's right. It was snowing in here. Can pick it up. Uh, yeah, I'm Tim from Pomona. Oh, yeah. First of all, yeah. I love your shirt. Thank you so yeah, much. And, uh, I want to know what you feel about porno rock bands like Rated X and Mentors. And yeah. yeah, what about that porno rock like you play on your yeah. stupid show? Yeah. I only play the hot hits. Oh, you're the I hot only play hits. The hot hits. Go on. Porno rock. Are you in a porno rock band or? Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Speaking That's of records. I want you to know that that Rick Dees has an album out here, and you won't believe some of the things on this album. You should be ashamed of yourself. He has he has a cut on this album called "Hurt Me, Baby, Make Me Write Bad Checks." Bad yes. <laughs> and if that isn't bad enough, he has a cut called Jane Fondle. Yeah. Oh, I'll be right back. Oh, boy. 
as, as you can see, way back then I was wearing the Wally suit. This is it. <laughs> but of course, this is a new Wally tie and a new Wally jacket and a new Wally shirt. Of and course. I, I'm even wearing new Wally shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> after just five days. Anyway, so that was Raunchy Rick D's almost six years ago. And the feud continues. And D's, if you're watching, Watch my lips, read my lips, as our great president says. I have not finished with you. Your days are numbered. I'll be right back. Welcome back, and of course this week we have been celebrating uh, not only Valentine's Day mm -hmm. last, last Wednesday, but um, Janice and I have been celebrating our second anniversary bill. That's right. Congratulations. Uh -huh. Again. And of course, when we got married, we were not even friends then. I don't think no. I even knew you. No, we didn't know each other. And of course, you were not at my bachelor party, were you? No, but I wish I could have been. I love bachelor parties. Well, was <laughs> Vanessa there? <laughs> no. no. Oh, Heaven okay. forbid. Almost as bad, though. Oh, okay. I mean, I, uh, we, about we had a televised bachelor party. All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, we had the, the whole bachelor party was shown on the air. And we had all kinds of outrageous things happen. Rick Dees, whom I have known, the raunchy Rick, he decided to surprise me. What a guy. So he sent along a surprise for my bachelor party. And here is Rick Dees' surprise. Watch. Uh, you're you're Westminster. But Rick Dees was supposed to be here. Why are you well, here? Well, I'm here. Uh, Rick asked me to come over. Rick Dees said to, I was supposed to deliver a special telegram for your bachelor party. Yeah. You were supposed to deliver a telegram. What kind of telegram were you supposed well, to deliver to me? It's a very special kind of telegram. Yeah! Hey, do you think I should let her give it to me? That was really, Bill, Bill, I know if you'd have been there, you would have been as embarrassed as me, right? Oh, absolutely. That was an embarrassing, embarrassing show. Horrifying. Horrifying. You wouldn't have liked to have seen that, would you? Quintessentially disgusting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Janice, uh, after the bachelor party, of course, we got married. Of course, and uh, first of all, I want to say that I could tell you hated every minute of that last segment. I really did. I you really hated, did. It. <laughs> hated it. Yes, uh, we, we got married and uh, we uh, televised the wedding. Mm -hmm. It was uh, shown on TV here on Channel 56. And it, it was a beautiful ceremony. Oh, wonderful. We had a beautiful rose ceremony and uh, we have a clip for it coming up now. And uh, uh, for all of you at, at home, uh, maybe you've, you've never seen this before and if you have, maybe you want to share a little bit of our special wedding ceremony again. I know I'm anxious to see it. It, it was a beautiful ceremony and it's, it's, it's going to mean a lot to me to see it again right now. So here, Janice and I, two years ago at our wedding. Watch. Janice. Janice. Today I give myself to you. Today I give myself to you. And ask for your tomorrows. And ask for your tomorrows. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. With all my heart. With all my heart. I give you my love. I give you my love. And ask for yours in return. And ask for yours in return. I stand by you in joy. I stand by you in joy. And in sorrow. And in sorrow. And ask that you stand by me. And ask that you stand by me. I give you my trust. I give you my trust. And ask that you accept me. And ask that you accept me. As your husband. As your husband. Janice, will you repeat after me? 
Wally. Wally. Today I give myself to you. Today I give myself to you. And ask for your tomorrows. And ask for your tomorrows. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. With all my heart. With all my heart. I give you my love. I give you my love. And ask for yours in return. And ask for yours in return. I stand by you in joy. I stand by you in joy. And in sorrow. And in sorrow. And ask that you stand by me. And ask that you stand by me. I give you my trust. I give you my trust. And ask that you accept me. And ask that you accept me. As your wife. As your wife. Face. Take his face. Inasmuch as Wally and Janice have declared themselves before God and this company, as well as giving a ring and receiving a ring in return. By the authority vested in me, it is a joy, a privilege, and an honor to pronounce you Wally and Janice, husband and wife. God bless your marriage, and may it forever be fruitful. May everything you touch prosper. May your heart's desire be fully achieved, but know with me that there's a power, which is the almighty spirit of God, greater than we, that blesses your marriage from on high. In the book, The Prophet by Gilbron, here's some beautiful thoughts that I'd like to share with you at this time. Wally and Janice, you were born together, and together you shall be. You shall be together in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness. Let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of that love. Let it forever be a sea that moves between you, the shores of your souls. Yet stand together, and yet not too near together. For the pillars of a temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress cannot grow in the shadow of another. Love one another, but make not a bond of that love. But more than anything else during your marriage, let each one of you be you. Wally and Janice, I have here two beautiful rosebuds. They cannot remain as a rosebud. Nature will impel them to open up, to reveal their beauty as well as their fragrance. You both remind me of the rosebud. You're budding in a new experience as husband and wife. Wally, the very first gift I'd like you to give Janice as your wife is this rose. The very first gift I'd like you, Janice, to give your husband is this rose. And before the day is over with, press the rose separately in a book. And any time during your marriage, if there might be hard feelings, if there might be feelings that you're disappointed, or whatever it might be, go look for that rose. And let that rose bring you to this very moment right here. The excitement, the love, and the joy and everything that you have. And that will dissolve any feelings that you might have of being hurt or angry. And each year, in addition to that which you give each other, in gifts or whatever it might be, Wally, give your wife Janice one rose for the book. Some very moving moments for Janice and for me. Hope they were for you too. I'll be right back. We're very late, folks, but you know, in the, in the wedding, it was said that uh, we have one rose for the book. Janice and I each have a rose for the book. Well, Janice and I have another rose, a very beautiful rose that has blossomed in the, over the past uh, six months. And this is our beautiful little rose. Her name is Holly, Holly Janice George. And what a beautiful rose she is, getting bigger and unfolding before our eyes every single moment. What a joy to both of us. I, I want to thank you, Bill, and certainly my pleasure. happy anniversary to my beautiful wife, Janice. Thanks, happy Janice. Happy anniversary to you, and happy Valentine's Day. I, I love you very much. I love you, too. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.